Hello everyone, Rice Time 911 here, and today in this Farming Simulator 2017 modding tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you about file paths, where they are, how you use them, and what they do. So, if you ever want to learn about that, well, this is the place. Awesome, so let's get started. Perhaps the best place to start is, where do I find my file paths? Okay, so, the three main places you would find them would be your mod desk, your XML, and your i3d file. These are the three main places you would find them. Now in this tutorial we'll go through these three files, mod desk, XML, and i3d, and we'll see examples of where the file paths may be and how we might alter them to fix any issues with your mod, perhaps maybe error missing uh, resource or something like that, but for now these are the files we'll be looking at. Okay, so now we, in general, know where we can find file paths. So now let's open up our mod desk and our XML and take a look at where we might see some of these within the XML and mod desk and how these affect things. Okay, so let's start out with the mod desk. Usually you'll find file paths in the mod desk in the You'll find it under the specializations section. So if you've added any custom scripts to your mod, then likely you'll have file paths for those custom scripts right here like this, like so. And basically what these file paths do is they tell where a certain item is. For instance, here it's saying scripts slash lafix.lua is where it will find the Lua file for this specialization. So, if we go in our mod, and we go to the scripts folder within our mod, we will see lafix.lua listed there, as you can see. So, the file path for this script would be correct, because it's under scripts, lafix.lua, and that's the folder it's in, scripts, lafix.lua. So basically, what these file paths do is point the game to where it can find each thing that's needed by the game, scripts, textures, basically whatever the game needs to load to make your mod work. That's great and all, but how we know where to start our file path? Like here we start at the folder scripts, then lafix.lua. But why did we do that? Okay, so let's go back and look at the main folder of our mod. Here we can see it all laid out like so. Basically, what the game does when you have it in a zip folder, like so, if you look at mods, usually you'll see them laid out like this with their i3d file out in the open like that, and a bunch of folders where all the stuff is stored, like so, and all the XMLs and stuff. Basically, what the game does is it looks in the zip file of the mod, and it starts out right here at the main folder, the main part. Basically, what you do when you're telling it to look for something is you're telling it, go to the scripts folder. You start out at the scripts folder because the game is already looking inside the main folder. So you just tell it where to go from there. And here we just tell it to go to the scripts folder and there it will find lafix.lua. So that's how that works. Now, let's say we had our lafix.lua script in a folder called it within the scripts folder. So how would we tell the game to go there? Basically what we do, we already have it saying scripts here. We would go slash it slash lafix.lua. And that would tell it to look into the scripts folder from the main part here into the scripts folder, then into the it folder to lafix.lua. So then, that would basically set it up so it would have the correct file path to find that Lua file, even though you have more than one folder leading to it. One thing to note about these file paths, however, is that they are case sensitive. So for instance, if we put large s scripts as the folder name, and here we can see that the Lua, lafix.lua, is in small s scripts, it's in a folder called small s scripts, and here if we had listed large s scripts, well the game would not be able to find 
that Lua file because it is not in a folder with a large X scripts. So that's one thing to keep in mind. When you're running out the file paths for your scripts, you should always keep in mind that it is case sensitive. Now you may notice a couple other places where we see file paths within our mod desk. And those two would be here under store items and also under brands. Now basically store items right here, it's the XML file name. So basically this file path is where it would find the XML for your vehicle. Which as we can see here, it just says lizard pickup rodeo.xml. So it would since there's no folder in front like there is here, for instance scripts then it would just be looking in the main folder since it just says the file name. So it would just look in the main folder here and it would find there's the XML for that. And it's much the same here for the brands image file path. It would be looking in the main folder of the mod, the main section of the mod, whatever you want to call it. And it would just look along here and it would find brand.dds and there you go it would find the image for the brand okay so i hope that explained that nice and thorough and now we're going to go on to the xml and see some examples of where we might see file paths in there so the xml file and that'll be that okay so there are actually quite a few places you might see file paths within the XML and under different names they may do it by icon and then a file path and basically yeah you would be able to tell if it's a file path or not because it would have this long trailing slashes and folder names and that sort of thing and another thing it would be file selected it would be under that file name and generally, it's pretty intuitive. You can tell which are the file names. And basically, it's the same idea as the mod desk. It just tells the game where to find a certain thing. So, for instance, here it's telling the game where to find a particle system for the exhaust pipe. And here it's telling it where to find the XML for the player. So, the player that drives the vehicle. So yeah, that's pretty much what that does, and another place you'd see it quite frequently is where all the sound files are listed. It'll say file, and then a long list there for the file path. And yeah, that's just some places you might see file path in the XML, and again, same idea as at mod desk. And you just want to make sure that where it's leading, the folder it's going to, it actually is where that file is. And you might notice here it says data, dollar sign data, sounds, transmission, and all that. Well, basically what this dollar sign data means is that it's looking in your farming simulator files, the game's files, to find these sounds. So basically that's where it's looking for these sounds, if it has that dollar sign data in it. And you can use this too to just look in your game files and see which file you want to specify to. And then just write out the correct file path with the folders, folder slash folder slash file. That's what it works like. Pretty simple once you get used to it. Lastly, let's look at the i3d file. An interesting thing about the i3d file is you actually can open it with Notepad or, like me, with Notepad++. Just right click, open with Notepad. And then you can see all the file names and file paths for pretty much all the textures. That's generally what it will be. XMLs, like shaders or textures, that's generally what the file paths will be like for the i3d file. Now if some of your textures aren't working properly or aren't showing up in game, then what you're likely going to want to do is open up your i3d file with 
notepad or notepad plus plus in this case and then check that the file path actually leads to the texture and let's just do that here for a second and here we have file name equals bootbarrer and farmer diffused up pink so let's just go look for that file path within our, within our mod so here we see the folder correct case note that uppercase b and farmer diffuse so we can see that that texture is indeed there now if we look further down we'll see these here which are file paths but we know something about them they have three slashes in them now that really doesn't make any sense does it because that would be like a nameless folder nameless folder or something it just that file path doesn't make sense so in this case to correct it you could remove the extra slashes and that would fix the texture and generally you want your slashes to be facing right in this case and yeah that's how the file paths work out and as we'll see here when we go in DC model it would be DC model slash so we're in the folder then slash FCA 299 and that would be in here somewhere I think so yeah if it was in there then that texture could be used by the game because it could find it so if you've got some problem with your mod not working properly in game the textures aren't showing up or the script isn't working properly you're getting Lua errors or something like that then one good thing to do is this and it's to go through and just check that your file names they're all correct the file paths lead to the correct place and just make sure that everything lines up correctly that way and if you correct the file paths then that should at least help some so essentially that's the basics of the file path and using it for your mod now some key things to note is that if you are having texture problems or the like one thing you can do is check your i3d because usually the texture files they're related to the i3d file textures shaders stuff like that is usually related to incorrect file paths in the i3d file now if you have problems with specializations not having the correct file path or scripts not working then you can check your mod desk and make sure that for your specializations that it has the correct file path for each Lua file and if you have just general problems with certain things not working like say for instance your exhaust particles weren't working then you'd want to check in your XML file and look for the exhaust particle section somewhere here I know it so oh here it is so you just want to go there and check your file name and make sure that it leads to the right place and then if it does then it should work in game should now sometimes it's a little finicky so you gotta play around with it a bit but for the most part you can get to work by correcting the file path okay so that ought to just about cover it I do hope that this has helped you to learn at least something about file paths so that you can use them correctly and get your textures working or any real problems you have with your mod because the file path can be yeah if it's not used correctly it can be a pretty big problem with your mod and can make a lot of things quit working or not work at all all right so if this video did help you then be sure to leave a like and subscribe check out my facebook page for some of my modding projects and other cool stuff like that and yeah i'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching bye